folks, welcome to this configuration change management for Office 365 using DevOps session. My name is Nick Chalabois. I am a technical delivery manager at Microsoft. My focus is on everything that has to do with DevOps and automation. Before I joined Microsoft back in 2015, I was a Firestorm VP for several years. I am the author of multiple books, including beginning PowerShell for SharePoint 2013 and 2016. I'm based out of Gatineau, Quebec, which is right across from Ottawa in Canada. Uh, you can see me at various technology conferences, SP TechCon, SharePoint uh, conference, the uh, collaboration summits, and so on, just to name a few. Everything we're going to be discussing today, you can find articles related to that, those topics on my blog. The challenge really is to figure out how to spell my last name, but if you can go to nickcharlebois.com, you're going to get access to my blog. Uh, there's also the official Office 365 DSC website, which we're going to be talking about, which contains a lot of information on how to get started. I am the owner of two very important tools, the first one being Reverse DSC, which allows you to extract configuration from existing environment, and the other one is Office 365 DSC, which is really core for this session here. We're gonna discuss both tools and details in uh, future sections. Now, I need to set the expectations. This is a very technical session. I'm saying 300 plus here on this slide, but really some of it might even be level 400. I'm gonna to try to keep it as high level as possible. Please bear with me. I mean, there are some fundamentals in there. We're gonna to have to talk about what desired state configuration is to begin with just to have that foundation. We're gonna spend about five to 10 minutes talking about this, and then we'll jump into the core of the discussion, which is how do you go and do the automation of configuration changes using Office 365 DSC. By the end of it, what I hope you folks are gonna be able to, uh, to do is apply everything we're gonna be covering in your projects right from the get-go. You're gonna have everything you need to get started and start using the tool to start automating your CI and CD, so continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines at uh, your, your customers or in your environment. So for the agenda today, we're going to start by talking about what PowerShell desired state configuration is, as I mentioned. Then we're going to move into Office 365 DSC, right? Talk about what the tool is, what it offers you to do. We'll talk about reverse DSC which allows you, as I said, to extract configuration out of existing environment, in our case, existing Office 365 tenants. And then we're going to see how we can integrate all of this inside our automated CI and CD pipelines using Azure DevOps. Now, if time permits, at the end, we're going to do a quick overview of what the roadmap is, what uh, we still have in store for you with regards to Office 365 DSC and O365 automation in general. Let's get started. Um, actually, before we move on, I just, I'm going to leave this here, right? I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but really this here, what I mean by uh, the, this quote is, in the context of DevOps, the core artifacts in DevOps is code. Right? Everything has code. We now have infrastructure as code. We have application code, which we're all familiar with. We have configuration as code, which is really the focus of this session. Even the pipelines we're building now are YAML code. We have documentation as code, if we take the example of docs on Microsoft.com. So it's really important to understand that this is where we're going when we're starting, starting to talk about DevOps. And one thing I would argue is that the IT pros or the ops folks in the future will be writing as much, if not more code than traditional devs in the enterprise. Right? So it's really important that they jump on the train right now and start adopting good application lifecycle management processes. Right? If you spend time writing your configuration as code, don't put it on a share drive. Use source control systems. Right? Try to automate as much as possible, make everything repeatable. But in order to, for you to do this, it needs to be exposed as code. Desired state configuration. So PowerShell desired state configuration is something that was released with PowerShell 4. I will, I'm going to say about the around the 2015 time frame, 2000, 2014, 2015. Um, it, as I said, was introduced with PowerShell 4, so any environment that has PowerShell 4, 5, 5.1 can leverage this. And it's a way for you to automate the deployment of your configuration, right? So to configure an environment using automation, 
but it's also a tool to allow you to keep that environment in its desired state. We're going to come back to this. So first off, just a quick uh, overview of what DSC looks like. You can see here that DSC is really what I would call declarative PowerShell. So it's a way for you to go and write a definition. Right? You don't write what the actions are. You write what you want, what you want the tenant at the other end to be configured as. What I was saying is that this slide here shows the uh, how you would go and define, for example, a site collection in SharePoint Online. So what we have here is we have what we call our DSC resort block, which is that SPO site. And I define the properties that I want for that site collection. So this is my definition for my site collection. I go, all right, the title has to be my SPO site. Here's the URL, the owner, and the template. And very importantly, the last thing is what account do you want to use to apply that configuration? In my case here, uh, I'm using the global admin, but it just has to be an account that has admin access on that workload, in this case, SharePoint Online. If we put this in comparison with the traditional imperative approach, which we're all used to, you can see that in the imperative approach, the one at the bottom, we're actually telling the actions, we're listing the actions we want to take. So for example, here, we're saying, I want to create a new site collection, so I need to go and run new dash SPO site. So if I was to run this the first time around, it will create the, the site no problem. If I rerun the same command, it will throw an error saying, no, the site already exists. You can't try to create it again. If you want to update that site, for example, let's say the owner changed, the owner for the site, you are, you are going to need to call into another command left called set SPO site. Whereas in the declarative approach, if the owner changed, all I need to do is change that line where it says owner to what I, the new desired state should be and rerun this. And the beauty about it is if something changes at the other end, I can just rerun it to have the environment back in that desired state. So I can run it as often as I want. It's always going to end up in the same state. This is the context, the concept of idempotency, which means run it as often as you want. You're always going to end up with the same thing. Now, I mentioned previously that, off, uh, that desired state configuration is not only good at bringing an environment in the desired state, it's also good at making sure it stays in that desired state. The way it's doing, so out of the box, desired state configuration will do what we call consistency checks. So every 15 minutes by default, that value can be changed. 15 is the minimum though. If you can go up to once every month or down to 15 minutes. But every 15 minutes, the DSC engine will do a check to see if the environment is still in the desired state. So it's going to ask the question, am I still in the desired state? And if it detects that there's a drift, it can take action on it. So the, the three options really, when you're configuring your, uh, your DSC engine, what we call a local configuration manager, is the first one is apply only. So that one is fairly straightforward, is here's how I want you to be configured. Go ahead, bring yourself in that desired state. And once you reach that desired state, your job is done, right? You don't do those consistency check. And so this is the equivalent basically of running imperative scripts. You create the environment or you bring it in the desired state and then you give the key to the tenants and you start falling to what we call the snowflake effect where they're going to change some settings and you're no longer in control as to what the, uh, the desired state or the current state should be. The second option is apply and monitor. It's also the default mode. So if you don't do anything by default, the moment you have PowerShell installed on the machine, the uh, DSC engine is set to apply and monitor. So this one here, what it does is every 15 minutes, it will do those consistency checks. And if it finds that there's a configuration drift, it will simply log an error in the event viewer. And it's up to you to go and review them, right? So it doesn't take any action. The next one is apply and autocorrect. Extremely powerful, also extremely dangerous, right? By dangerous, I mean, you need to know what you're doing. Let's take an example where you decide to go crazy and you define everything using DSC for your Office 365 tenant, including all your site collections. So you're basically doing your information architecture using DSC. You go and you deploy that, your environment is in the desired state. You finally, I don't know, you launch the new portal to users, they start using it. And within a month, you realize that, you know what? Out of the, let's say, 300 sites that you deployed with DSC, 
only about 15% of them are used. So you start doing spring cleaning. What's going to happen when the consistency check kicks in? Well, all those sites are going to be recreated because it's always, at the moment, it detects a drift, it brings itself back into the desired state. So you need to be very careful how you split your configuration and how you actually configure the VSC engine. The beauty about Office 365 VSC is that you can split your configuration into different pieces. So for example, if you want to make sure that everything that is uh, related to security and compliance is an applied mental graphic, because that is crucial to your enterprise, right? It's mission critical. So that layer, always apply and monitor, uh, apply and correct. So if somebody changed something, you want it to be fixed as soon as possible. But your site collections, your SharePoint Online property bags, properties, you just want to apply and monitor. Or maybe you just want to apply and then you let people deal with them. Right? So you can break your configuration into smaller configuration pieces and assign the mode you want to each one. So that's the flexibility you have with Office 365 DSC. One thing I also want you to take out of this session is that DSC is not only good at defining what should be in the environment based on the desired state, it's also good at defining what should never be on the environment. So for example, if we take a look at the example at the bottom there where it says SPO search manage property color, you see that property ensure equals absent. Most of the resources that actually create an instance of something will have that property. That property can either be present, which is the default. So if you omit that property, it's going to assume present by default, or it can be absent. If you set it to absent, that means when I'm reading this, it says there should never be a search managed property named color in this environment. So if somebody goes in and creates a managed property in SharePoint Online Search Center called color, within 15 minutes, the configuration drift is going to be detected, and if you're in applying autocorrect, it's going to remove that property to make sure it brings itself in the desired state. Now, ensure equals absent. It's almost impossible for you to define all the non scenarios, right? Um, but it's something that you can definitely do. Let's talk about DSC modules real quick. So, out of the box, when you have PowerShell 4, 5, or 5.1 installed in an environment, you only have a handful of components you can interact with. Right? Mostly stuff that's at the OS level. So Windows feature you can configure, files, groups. Right? So not much when you start thinking about it. What you need if you want to expand that, uh, the reach of your configuration is you need to go and acquire what we call DSC modules. The best way to acquire those modules is to go in the PowerShell gallery. And then let's say you're doing on-premises environments uh, and you're using DSC, you can go and obtain the SQL Server DSC module, the SharePoint DSC module. And then you can start interacting or writing the SC configuration to uh, interact with SharePoint to configure your SQL Server environments. Office 365 DSC is just one of those modules. So if you want to get started, you need to go and acquire that module from the PowerShell gallery. Let's do some example of DSC. So I'm going to go to my environment here. And what I have is I have this configuration that defines two users, user Nick and user Bob. Okay. You can see that I have my configuration wrapped inside a configuration object. This is a new reserved keyword in PowerShell 4.0 and above that basically says everything that follows is part of my configuration. Then what you need to do is you actually need to compile that configuration. So you see here, I'm just calling into the configuration object. So if this was called demo2, I would need to call into demo2, right? So I'm just calling that as if it was a function. And when I call this, I'm just going to change this back because otherwise it's not going to work for my demo. But when you're calling into it, it compiles the configuration into what we call a MUF file. Well, MUF file is the extension. And you don't really need to know what it is, but it's compiling it as a different file. So it's the equivalent for the folks in the room that are uh, devs. It would be the equivalent of this being your C-sharp code, for example, and the MUF file being your DLL. And once you have your compiled file, what you can do is you can just go start DC configuration, demo one. So go ahead and apply the demo one configuration. So because I'm a big believer in showing you that there's no smoke and mirrors, we can see from here that I don't have a Nick or a Bob user. I'm going to go and run this here. It's going to take a few seconds and to no surprises, it's going to go and create my two users. It should just be a few seconds. There we have it. So I'm going to refresh this, and now you can see that I have Nick and Bob. 
Perfect. And so every 15 minutes, remember I was telling you about that consistency check. In the background, what's actually happening is we're going to be calling into something called test DSC configuration. So every 15 minutes, the DSC engine is going to run that command. That command is going to do an assessment of the environment and it's going to return true or false. In this case here, it's returning true because my environment is in the desired state. What happens now if I go and delete Bob, for example, and rerun this? Again, to no surprises, this is going to return false because I am no longer in the desired state. So that consistency check detected a drift. Right? It doesn't tell me much, though. It just tells me that the environment is not in the desired state. So what I can do is I can run detailed analysis, and this is going to give me more information as to what the drift actually is. So it's going to come back and say, you're not in the desired state. Your user Nick is correct, but your user Bob is not in the desired state. Okay? So it's going to log an error in the event viewer. In the case where I'm set to apply a mental correct, remember that it's actually going to act on a drift and it's going to attempt to fix itself. And the way it does it is it goes in and it just calls back into the start DSC configuration. But this time it does use existing, which is basically saying, I already have in memory the information about how the environment is supposed to be configured. I know there's a drift, just reapply the definition that I'm aware of. So basically just reapply the configuration so that I'm back in my desired state. So if I rerun this here and refresh, and Bob is back. So this is how DSC works in a nutshell.